You know, many of you keen viewers noticed a couple videos back that there was something new in our RV. We just can't sneak anything by you guys. That's right. We stopped by our friends at Dometic in Elkhart, Indiana, and they provided us with my dream 12 volt, 10 cubic foot, residential styling, variable compressor, refrigerator, the Dometic DMC 4101. Welcome back to our next video. Today we are going to share our top six reasons why we love this new 12 volt fridge and stick around to the end where Aaron is going to share the installation process. It was a lot easier than you would think. And the first thing we have to talk about is the performance of this compressor style refrigerator. It is more like your residential refrigerator in your house and it has way better performance over an RV absorption style refrigerator. So what does this mean for me? Well, it means less frozen vegetables, less frozen eggs, and less surprising food spoilage. And what I mean when I say surprising is in our previous fridge, Everything would be looking good and then all of a sudden some veggies would spoil due to condensation or something related to heat or humidity or things like that. And what we mean by that is in a compressor style fridge behind this fully stacked <laughs> food we have in here is a fan in the back which helps evenly distribute the air all the way around this refrigerator as opposed to the RV style where the coil is in the back where all the cold air comes from and it just relies on gravity to bring the cold air down. And so next to the coil, it's extremely cold, stuff will freeze. And then on the bottom down here, things could actually spoil like meat. So if you're in a home, you usually don't think about where you need to put certain items for performance purposes. Like you don't think about putting vegetables in a certain spot and them freezing or meat in a certain spot and them spoiling. You might pay attention to where you put your meat for sanitary purposes, like if juices drip or anything raw, but that's about it. So in the RV, um, before we had this fridge, I would always put my meat on the top shelf and I still do. I think that's just an old habit. Um, and then I just don't have to worry about anything else. I can pretty much mix and match my containers and i know there's multiple rv hacks that people have for the refrigerators where you put 12 volt computer fans in there and things like that but i just think that's kind of ridiculous that we have to take a brand new refrigerator and hack it so that it actually works or cools properly so when we were in our van the first three years of our rv life we did have a 12 volt fridge so 12 volt fridges are something that we've had before we know that we like them and we knew what to expect with it. We also used a 12 volt fridge during our vehicle based overlanding stint when we lived in our truck and our rooftop tent and that was great to have as well. Now getting into this travel trailer was the very first time that we ever had the gas absorption and it took us a little bit of time to get used to it to figure out its quirks and everything and I like to think we did that fairly well and we basically saw it start to struggle most when we got into the Florida Keys in April. April and May we were in Florida, so it was getting really hot and sweltery, a lot of sun, a lot of heat, and a lot of humidity. So that is where we definitely saw the refrigerator struggling. In particular, I noticed a lot more spoiling greens. It was harder to keep my produce fresh even when it was brand new. And we also saw our freezer struggling a lot. So with the gas absorption in that high heat, it was icing up really, really bad, really, really quickly. We had inches of block ice in the back of it. And it was so much that it was like dripping water in the front of the freezer. Now with this new style, back to the 12 volt again, I don't have to defrost, there's no ice buildup, and it's really great to not have to do that monthly chore, or sometimes even more than monthly if you're in those hot areas. Another big deal for us getting a 12 volt fridge is the ease of operation. And what I mean by that is we're used to having a 12 volt compressor fridge and we never thought about it. It was just on and worked. Kind of like when you're in your house, you don't think about your fridge, you don't have to switch it on and off or put it to propane or worry about it being level or any of that stuff. It just works. And there are enough variables with RVing that I don't want to think about one more and that being the fridge. So just having it on and operating 24 seven, working like it should, 
cooling like it should, not frosting up, not dripping water from the freezer, not having hot and cold spots. It just works. And again, I do understand with the cost of a 12 volt fridge, if you already have an RV gas absorption fridge and it works fine for the way that you RV or camp, it might not make sense to upgrade to a 12 volt. But a lot of new RVs are actually coming with 12 volts now. New RVs are coming with a couple hundred watts solar as standard and there's options to get lithium batteries right out of the gate. And that brings us directly into our next top point, which is the increased space. We get about 25% more space in this unit. And I haven't busted out my ruler to compare how the freezer got larger versus the refrigerator space got larger, but I think most of that space is in the refrigerator. So the freezer itself, we'll start there. I was able, I think I'm able to get more food in this freezer, even though they're the same roughly cubic square feet. And I think it's because that back doesn't fill up with ice. We would get that ice on the back, which automatically takes a couple of, couple of inches. And then in addition to that, I also couldn't pack that freezer as full as what I would like. Because if I would pack it full, the air couldn't circulate and then the food wouldn't freeze. So what's the point of having a freezer? If the food's not frozen, it's all gonna go bad. So I would decrease what I put in there. And I think in this one, because it does have a fan, I am able to fill it more to its true capacity on what it's intended to hold. So I feel like I get more in here, even though the space didn't necessarily increase. But I do think that the space in the fridge increased by a lot, about 25%. And that makes a huge difference, especially when you're eating a lot of fresh vegetables and you have just a bunch of stuff in here. You really take for granted having refrigerator space until it's taken from you. And so I'm really excited to have it back. Just being able to do more food prepping, do more grocery shopping, make your trips last a little bit longer. I absolutely love the space. I think that's probably my overall favorite out of all of these is the extra space. This new refrigerator is 10 cubic feet and the previous fridge that came with this travel trailer was eight cubic feet. Now the beautiful thing is that it fits in the exact same footprint right here, which Aaron is going to go into more detail during his installation discussion. One of the main reasons we wanted to switch was because of the power consumption. You guys have heard me complain numerous times about our old fridge that would use about 300 watts of power while on electricity. And not only does it use 300 watts, but it also uses it pretty consistently. So trying to run your RV gas absorption on the 120 volt electric really does take a lot of battery power. I remember when we first got our RV, I thought I could just run that fridge off of our battery power. And that 300 watts is roughly 25 amps of power. And if you think about it, you know, in four hours of traveling, that's gonna be a 100 amp hour battery, which is quite a bit of power. And most of you know we have a very large electrical system with 1200 watts of solar up on the roof and 810 amp hours of Battleborne lithium batteries. So I was kind of blown away that we couldn't run our gas absorption fridge off of that large electrical system. It just took way too much power. We've always had 12 volt compressor style fridges in the past. Our Sprinter van had a round of five cubic foot 12 volt fridge and it had 300 watts of solar on the roof with 400 amp hours of lithium batteries and that was plenty to run that fridge. We never worried about running out of power uh, in that setup with the van. So moving to this larger Dometic DMC 4101 which is 10 cubic feet and it runs on roughly 150 watts of power but the key is it's a variable compressor so that's the max power, which it rarely ever sits at. It's usually more around 100 watts down to 50 watts of power that it's using. And because it's so much more efficient, like we talked about earlier, it cycles on and off and doesn't run constant like our old absorption fridge did on electric. 
I mentioned in a previous video, I did a little experiment. I shut our solar panel charging off. And when we were on a travel day, our RV was only running off of the 50 watts of power that comes out of the seven pin from the truck. And after four hours of driving, our battery was still at 99%. So that means that that 50 watts of power that was coming constant from our truck was enough to run the fridge uh, and actually any other small draws that were being used on the RV like the propane detector or um, any of those residual draws that you get from an RV, parasitic draws. Now, kind of like the absorption fridge, this compressor fridge also struggles a little bit in the high heat, but not performance wise, it's more energy consumption. So as the heat goes up and the temperature goes up, the fridge just runs more than it typically would if it was a little bit cooler out. Now I don't have exact power usage from this fridge. I don't have an easy way to just test it for 24 hours, um, but I just want to give a few examples of how it's working for us. And our 1200 watts of solar and big lithium battery bank is obviously plenty to run a fridge like this. But if I had to make an assumption, I think if you had 300 to 600 watts of solar on your RV roof and you know a good battery bank, it doesn't have to be a lithium battery bank, but a good size battery bank so that your fridge can run overnight and be charged at, back up the next day by the sun. Um, I don't think it would take very much to run this 12 volt fridge. Now, of course, on propane, a propane fridge uses less 12 volt power, but it uses quite a bit of propane. And that's also a subjective term because some people think uh, a propane tank lasts them all summer long, not a big deal. But coming from our perspective, we are full time on the road. So our fridge runs full time. And if you have it on propane, uh, that's a lot of propane. There is an article out there by John and Peter from the RV Geeks who are way smarter than we are at this type of stuff. And they say your fridge runs roughly 61 hours off one gallon of propane. So in a 20 pound propane tank, which is 4.6 gallons, that would be somewhere around 11 days, I think, which might be great if you're just going on a trip for a week or you're kind of a weekend warrior. But for us with this big electrical system it makes way more sense for us to have a fridge that we can run off of that system and not worry about getting propane it's not necessarily just the the cost of the propane it's the hassle finding propane is a pain in the butt and we don't like doing it this next point is totally subjective it depends on your individual preference and style but to us we really love the appearance of this new 12 volt fridge. We love the stainless steel. It's like a brushed stainless steel. The logoing is very clean and these side handles are very clean as well. So what you end up getting is this nice bright appearance. The refrigerator that we had previously, the gas absorption, it was actually like high quality. It was made well. It was this paneled wood looking thing but it was very dark and we struggle with all of the brightness in here, trying to brighten it up. So having the stainless steel helps a ton and it just looks more modern to us. I think that that older, well, it's not old. I think that the brown wood panel version looks a little bit more dated, but again, that's just our personal opinion. And this does stay pretty clean. I think having the brushed appearance helps with the fingertips. Having the handles on the side helps with fingerprints as well so you get used to just grabbing it here rather than putting your paws all over it but it is really easy to clean all i do is i use a microfiber and i use just some plain water oops <laughs> this didn't work very well all i do is i use a microfiber and plain water give it a squirt usually it's right here that gets the fingerprints. I'm not pointing any fingers to who puts the fingerprints on it, Erin. I heard once that you want to try to wipe it with the grain. I don't know. It's not that complicated. We use this. It looks beautiful. And I love the way that it brightens up the room. One downfall of the stainless steel is that it could dent easily. See sock? All right, hang on. There you go. Yeah. Sock? Sock. <laughs> and we actually already got a little dent in ours 
And that is from our bathroom door, which does swing right into it. So we should have a little, one of those little door kickers right here that stops it. And that would have prevented this, but you know, we didn't do the swing test and open the door too quickly. And, and that's it. So it's just a little dimple. It's not pierced through luckily, and we just have to be careful moving forward. And the last thing we're gonna talk about today is the installation process, which is way easier than you would think it is. So the installation process went fairly smoothly and with the help of our friends, Jeff and Deb Spencer, us four non-professionals accomplished everything in just about six hours. I just want to clarify too, this is not an exact how to install the fridge, but just sharing how we did it ourselves. Of course, we needed to start out by emptying out all of the contents out of our old fridge. And while Chris and Deb did that, Jeff and I went to the back to shut off the propane as well as start on the electrical. We cut power to the fridge by removing the 12 volt fuse from the breaker panel. And then we were safe to remove the 12 volt wires from the back of the refrigerator. The factory wires in our RV were a 12 gauge, which was good news because that means we didn't have to run any larger wires to handle a larger amount of amperage that the new 12 volt refrigerator will draw. Dometic has a little chart in the back of their book that kind of shows you what size gauge and how long the run you should use. The fitting that fit our propane line was a 3 8 inch flare fitting. A uh, cap style or a plug style and because this is a flared style fitting we didn't need to use the Teflon tape that a lot of people would recommend but I've heard in these situations that even using Teflon tape um, could hinder in the flared fitting so these flared fittings are designed uh, to work just by them being flared not by having the sealant and the tape Next up, getting the old fridge out of the cabinet was as simple as removing some trim and a few mounting screws. We also took the front doors off just to help alleviate some weight and help carry it out. Now the new fridge has a width of about 24 inches and our door is about 24 and a half. So I was really concerned on if it would even fit out the door. I've heard some horror stories where people need to remove the trim around their RV door or take things out uh, through windows. But thankfully this fridge squeaked right out of our door. Now this is something I didn't account for, but the new fridge was actually about a quarter of an inch larger than our cabinet opening. And although these DMC 4101s are designed to fit in the factory cutout for the eight cubic foot, all RVs are handmade. And that really leaves a lot of room for different tolerances. So I bet if you measured 10 different openings, you'd probably get 10 different sizes in different RVs. So this is something to keep in mind. Yours might be a little smaller like ours was, or it might be a little larger where you're gonna need an extra trim kit to help fill in the gap. But the three of us managed to manhandle this 120 pound plus refrigerator up into our cutout with, with only marring up a couple spots of our trim, but it did end up creating a small gap on the bottom. But our tight fit didn't require us to use any type of trim kit, and it actually looks pretty good in there. So again, this new fridge is just held into the cabinet by a couple screws. We made sure it was level. There are a little adjustment legs on the bottom, but it uh, was pretty level right out of the gate. After the successful mounting, we needed to then tackle the electrical part, which pretty much consisted of a 12 volt positive and negative, as well as an extra chassis ground. I did have to add some extra wire onto the factory wires just to make it up to our connection on the new fridge, but I just used some heat shrink connectors and a couple lengths of extra 10 gauge I had lying around. And then it was time to put the fuse back in and turn on the 12 volt. Everything worked immediately out of the box and you can see here that it ended up running at right around 150 watts of power. That's also including um, some of the small residual draws that were in our RV, but everything worked right on the first go. 
I put a little thermometer in the freezer just to kind of see how quickly it would come down to temperature and it only took about an hour and the freezer was sitting at about 30 degrees. So the performance on this thing is pretty great. And like we mentioned, when we get into extremely hot weather in the upper 90s, the fridge still works just great and has no performance issues at all. The only thing is that it does end up using more electricity as it's running more often. Thanks again, everyone, for watching, and thank you, Dometic, for being such an awesome company. Jeff and Deb, thanks again for your help and support, and we'll catch you all on the next video.